Welcome to Joystick. In this video, you will learn how to implement a stack in Java. I have made this video in such a way so that you can also code with me and learn while watching this video. Of course, it goes without saying that you may feel the need to pause the video to write the code on your machine or laptop. If you are new to my channel, then make sure you subscribe to Joyce Tech and hit the bell icon as that way you will come to know whenever I release new videos like this in the future. So let's move ahead to understand a little bit about stack. Don't worry, the theory portion will be very quick. The middle figure here is the stack. You can see it has three elements, 10, 20 and 30. Whenever a stack is discussed, you hear about two operations, push and pop. When you add an element, it is basically added from the top of the stack and this operation is called a push. And when you remove an element from the stack, it is basically removed from the top of the stack only and this operation is called pop. You can see that the last element added is the first element removed, which means that the stack stores items on a LIFO basis, that is last in first out basis. Alright, so we have discussed enough theory about stack. It's now time to go and write that Java class for uh, the stack. Do remember that this is one of the interview questions I'm talking about here. So stay tuned because the fun begins now. This is my IntelliJ ID. I have created a new project a data structures in which I'll begin with creating a class to write the fields and methods for implementing the stack. So let me right click on source, then I go over on new and then I click on Java class. I'll name it stack Java to give it some meaning. Okay, so the class has been created. Now let's begin writing the code. I'll declare three fields first. I'll implement the stack using an array which is a static in nature. That means once a capacity of the array is defined, it is going to stay as it is throughout the life of the program. But in stack, after a pop or a push operation, the current size will have to change. Thus, we need a variable that keeps track of this change. So I am going to declare a variable top to cater to this need. So let me write private int top semicolon. Okay, so the top variable has been created. I will declare another variable size of stack, uh, which will remember the capacity of the array I am using as a stack. So I'm going to write private int size underscore of underscore stack. And finally, I'll declare the array. I'll name it stack. So it will be private int stack. There you go. I'll write a constructor now which will receive the size during the object initialization and thus initialize the stack array. So it will be public stack java int, I'm sorry, I'll have to start the brackets int size. And then I'll open the curly braces. I'll write stack here I am initializing the array and size and then I'll assign the value of size to the variable size of stack and finally I'll assign minus one to the variable top. So why I assigned a minus one to the variable top? Because top represents the last index of the stack. It can't be zero because that will imply that there is one element in the stack which is not the case because the stack is empty. Hence, it has to be minus one. It will make more sense once we proceed in the program. But I'm going to write three very important methods. The first will be the size method, which will return the size of the stack. Remember, not the array, but the stack. In here, top variable will play a key role. So it will be public int size brackets opened return top plus one so when top is zero then the size of the stack will be one when top is one then the size of the stack will be two because index in java begins at zero 
Therefore, I have added plus one to the variable top. The next method will be to check if the stack is full. That means the size of the stack is equal to the capacity of the array. We need to call this method every time we push an element in the stack to avoid any runtime error. Index out of bound exception to be precise. So I am going to write public boolean check underscore if underscore full brackets then curly braces return size double equal to sign size of stack. So you can see I'm calling this uh, size method that is uh, indeed going to return the size of the stack and uh, when it is going to be equal uh, to the size of the array that I have assigned over here in the constructor then this is going to return true otherwise false. The next method will be to check if the stack is empty. Simply I'll call the size method again I created a while ago and check if it is equal to zero or not. If it's zero, then the method will return true, else false. So I'm going to write public, then boolean, check, underscore if, underscore empty, brackets, curly braces open, then I'm going to simply write return, I'll call the size method inside here, and I am going to equate it to zero which I do it using double equals to sign. Now, let me write a method to print the stack so that I can print it at any point in time. First, I'll check if the stack is not empty, only then I'll write the code to print the stack. So I'm going to write public void print underscore stack brackets, curly brackets open. Then I'm going to write if not check if empty this is the method i created a while ago if uh, it is not empty then i'm going to print system dot out dot print ln the stack is semicolon and i'll start a for loop so int i is going to be top i greater than equal to zero i minus minus and i'm going to print system dot out dot print ln stack i thing to note uh, here is that i'm running a decrementing loop from the final index of the stack which is actually given by the top variable to zero so that the stack is printed in the right way with the last element displayed at the top. Time to write the main methods of stack, push, pop and top. So while writing the push method, I'm going to first check if the stack is full. If it is, then I'll simply print stack overflow and exit the program. So I'm going to write public void push int x that will be the parameter the element which i'll be pushing in the stack and first i'm going to start with if check if full then i'm going to simply display stack overflow and i'll exit the program in the else part, I'll type a message and then we'll write the code to insert the element in the stack at the top. So it will be else. Then inside else, I'm going to first print a good message, which is going to say pushing. Then uh, I'm going to display the element that I'm pushing inside. And I'm going to write stack inside it double plus sign top equals to x semicolon note that i have incremented the value of the top variable so that the element gets inserted at the next index in case of the first element top is minus one so top is minus one when the stack is empty so when i am uh, 
inserting the first element that case i'm talking about when top is minus one and when this line of code is called top will increment to zero and the first element will be placed at index zero all right time to write the pop method now so like we have a pop method available in python list we don't have such a facility available in the java array top variable is what we'll have to decrease to adjust the size of the stack but first i'll check if the stack is not empty to avoid the runtime exception therefore i'll write public void pop within curly braces i am going to start an if else so within if i'm going to write check if empty then i will write system dot out dot print ln and i'll simply write stack is empty and in the next line i'm going to write the code to exit the program this looks good now the check if empty method will return true if the stack is empty if so this message will be printed stack is empty and i will exit the program using this line of code now in the else part i'll type a simple message so that will be else curly braces system dot out dot print ln popping space plus now i'll return the popped element by calling a method top i haven't written the top method yet but i'll write it next but for now i'm i'm going to write top i'm going to give a function call from here and after that i'm going to write top equals to top minus one point to note is that i am decrementing the variable top such that uh, its uh, last index uh, reduces by one so even if the popped element stays in the array it will no longer be in the stack so the truth is that uh, the popped element is not going anywhere it stays in the array the program is tricking the user by decrementing the value of the top variable which acts as the final index of the stack finally i'll write the top method this method will display the topmost element of the stack but i would check first if the stack is not empty then i'll return the topmost element so i am going to write public int top and inside it i'm going to start an if else so it will be if so i'm going to check if the stack is not empty for that i'll use an exclamatory sign and i'll simply write check if empty open the curly braces inside which i will write return stack and then i'll use the top variable so this is going to return the topmost element of the stack in the else part i am going to simply write system dot out dot print ln and uh, i am going to write stack is empty now i am getting a red mark over here this is because that the function is expecting me to return something but uh, i am returning a value only in the if part and nothing over here so either i can write something like this return zero over here and make it go away or i can simply remove this else part and write these two lines of the code just beneath this if part but i'll prefer keeping the else part that's it i believe i have written all the necessary methods which uh, should be there in the stack class now let me create another class which will keep the main method from which i can execute the operations on the stack so i am going to right click on src then i am going to hover on new and click on java class i am going to name this class as driver stack and hit enter and there you go my driver class has been created driver stack seems to be the right name to me i'll simply type main now and intellij will create the main method for me first i'll initialize the object of the stack java class so i will write stack java then i'll give the name of the object as stj 
equals to new stack java and i'll pass 3 as the parameter notice that i have given the capacity of the array is 3 so the stack can store maximum 3 elements okay maximum 3 elements now let me push a few elements uh, inside the stack so i'll write stj dot push first i'll push one uh, stj dot push then i'll push two and finally i'll push three inside my stack i will now like to print the stack so i'll simply write stj dot print underscore stack this is the method i created let's check what happens after i push an element after the stack is full so as you can see that the capacity of the stack is three that uh, i have given from here and i have pushed three elements already now i want to check what happens when i try to push the fourth element so i'm going to write stj dot push four okay and now i'm going to run the program so let me zoom it out a little bit and i'll click over here to run this driver stack class let's wait and see what happens all right here is my output so so first i pushed one so it displays pushing one that's nice and then it displays pushing two this is also correct and finally it pushes three so my push method in the stack java class is working fine and then it is printing the stack because over here i tried to print the stack so it printed the stack successfully as three two one so notice that three is the last element that i pushed and that is why it is displayed at the top so stack is printed correctly and when I try to push the fourth element a message is printed stack overflow that means the check if full method is working fine over here and the program is displaying the correct output the intended one now let's check how the pop function is doing whether it is working correctly or not but before making a call to the pop function i am going to remove this line of code because if i don't remove it the program is going to exit at this line of code you already saw so i'm going to simply remove it and after that i'm going to use my object to call the pop function the expectation is that the last element the topmost element three will be removed from my stack and only one and two are going to stay in my stack so let's check at this point of time which is going to be the topmost element the expectation is that i'm going to get two as the answer but let's check by calling the top function itself so i'm going to write system dot out dot print ln and then i'm going to simply write topmost element at present space plus and uh, i'm going to use the object to call the top function okay this is going to do the necessary task after this i'm going to check what the size of the stack is so expectation is again that uh, the size of the stack will be two because there are two elements remaining inside so the message that will be printed will be size of the stack plus stj size i created the size function as well now let's run this program and see if the actual result matches the expected result so i'm going to click on this icon over here and then i'm going to click on run driver stack dot main and the output should be printed over here okay i have the output over here till here we already checked it was working fine and then we called this pop function as a result of which popping three is printed over here so i can say that the pop function is working fine then i'm trying to get the topmost element in the stack so the topmost element at present 
is 2. So after popping 3 from this stack, 2 and 1 are remaining and 2 is supposed to be the topmost element which is being printed here. So top function is also giving us the correct result. After that I simply printed the size of the stack and the size of the stack is 2 which is also correct. That means so far the program has been doing just fine. Now what I'm going to simply do, I'm going to simply call pop function three times. So in the first pop function call, two is going to be eliminated or removed from the stack. In the next pop function call, one is going to be removed from the stack and the stack will become empty. So I just want to check what happens after I call the pop function on an empty stack. The expectation is that stack is empty message should be printed. Now let's run the program and see if this last use case is working fine or not. After which I can say that I have implemented the stack in Java correctly. So let me click on this icon and run driver stack dot main. All right, so program hasn't crashed. Uh, I'm so happy. So till here, we already validated the program. After that, I called pop three times. So in the first pop, two got eliminated from the stack. In the second pop, one got eliminated from the stack. And in the last pop that was run on an empty stack, which was supposed to print stack is empty. And indeed the program has printed stack is empty. So I can say that the program is completely working fine. So we have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you coded with me this program of implementing stack in Java. You will find the GitHub link to this solution in the description box below. If you have any questions related to this program, then you can surely ask me in the comment section. Do let me know how do you find this video in the comment section. I look so much forward to help you with programming. I'll see you in the next video of Joey's Tech. Goodbye.